Uh, hello there and uh, welcome back. So uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to create uh, one basic example using uh, motion layout. So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, motion layout, uh, motion layout is a new class available in the constraint layout 2.0 and uh, it's created uh, to help Android developers uh, manage uh, motion and uh, widget animation in their application. Uh, okay, so I have already created the one basic example and uh, here we have just uh, one activity and uh, this simple layout. So first uh, let's get familiar with this layout. So as you can see here the root uh, element is constraint layout and uh, in order to use uh, this uh, motion layout your root uh, element uh, needs to start with a constraint layout. And uh, here, as you can see, we have uh, one uh, image view, and then we have uh, one uh, title, which is actually a text view. Then we have a scroll view, and inside this scroll view, we have uh, one uh, simple text, of course. And this is just a little bit longer text. So uh, if I open that application, you can see that uh, we can scroll this uh, text down below and so on. And uh, in this video, we're going to make a motion layout so we can actually uh, decrease the height of this uh, image and we can increase uh, the actual size of uh, this text so we can read that uh, even better. So we can show this text on the whole screen and uh, have a better look uh, on it. So uh, the first thing uh, you need to do, uh, you need to check if your uh, Gradle build file has this uh, constraint layout uh, dependency. So from Android Studio 4.1 I think uh, this dependency is uh, included in your project by default. So at the moment of uh, recording this tutorial I'm using a 2.0.3 version and you just need to be sure that you have that. Okay, so we will close that for now and let's open up our layout. So the first thing you need to do, uh, you need to click right click on your layout and then you need to select option that says convert to motion layout. So press that and uh, click convert. Okay, so now you will see that the new uh, motion uh, layout editor appeared uh, on the right side here. And uh, first, uh, before uh, we get introduced a little bit with this editor, uh, let's get into XML code so we can see uh, what changes uh, have we made here. So the first change is that uh, our root layout is now a motion layout. And this uh, motion layout now contains uh, one attribute named uh, layout description and uh, it contains this uh, activity main scene. So this is a new file which was uh, automatically generated by our uh, motion layout. And as you can see here inside this uh, XML directory, we can see this uh, new XML file. So we're going to open that and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, those uh, elements inside this uh, XML file a little bit later when we actually finish creating our uh, motion layout. But for now we're going to skip that. So let's get back to our activity main layout and let's uh, select this design here. Okay, so uh, the first thing you will see here, uh, those are the three actual uh, rectangles. So the first one represent our actual uh, layout uh, and those two represent uh, the actual state of uh, our uh, layout. So this is the start state or start end point and this is the end end point, okay? So uh, we are going to modify this uh, end end point and our start end point will uh, look something like that, okay? And uh, you will see when we actually start uh, creating that uh, layout and on the top you can see this uh, little arrow and that's basically a transition. So we're going to create uh, some uh, key attributes uh, later in this uh, tutorial, so you will see. And uh, okay, so here on the top you can see one image that says a cycle between layouts. And when we press that, you will see that a new section will appear here. We can press that once again and that section uh, will stay now on the left side. And when we press again, it will disappear. So I'm going to press one more time so uh, that section can be located uh, right here below this, uh, this uh, endpoints. Uh, so what we're going to do, I'm going to select this end endpoint and I'm going to select this uh, image view, okay? So uh, now on the right side here, we're going to change uh, some uh, attributes of this uh, image view in this uh, end uh, endpoint. So for example, default value of our image view uh, layout height is uh, 280 dp and uh, I'm going to change that. But first I want to remove uh, all constraints here. Okay, and now I'm going to set that to uh, 0. So 0 dp. And as you can see, uh, its height will not shrink uh, completely. And that's why we need to set this uh, not to 0 dp, but 1 dp instead. 
okay so now basically we're going to see uh, one line here on the top but don't worry we're going to hide that uh, completely so as you can see when we select this end end point uh, we are not going to see this image view anymore and when we select this start end point we're going to see it so because this is a default or a start end point and we're going to modify uh, end end point uh, this time so from down below you can also select uh, all of those uh, views inside our layout so we have background image view we have title and scroll view but in this case we're going to only work with our image view so we have changed its height to 1 dp and uh, now it's time for us to add some more uh, animations to it so first we need to select this uh, transition arrow so press that and uh, here we're going to select this uh, little icon that says create keyframes so from here uh, we have a few options and uh, in this video i'm going to focus on a key attribute so uh, press that and here we're going to see a new window uh, which will prompt us to uh, select the view which we want to animate and in this case this is a background image view and for the position uh, keyframe we're going to set uh, that for uh, uh, 100 for now uh, so the keyframes are actually um, scoped here uh, in this layout editor in this motion layout editor so uh, we have keyframes from 0 to 100 so 0 is the start point and 100 is the end point and here i'm going to set 100 and for the attribute i'm going to select alpha for now so i'm going to press add and here you will see that a new uh, attribute uh, is uh, added inside this uh, transition section and now on the right side here we can see the actual alpha value and the frame position so the frame position is 100 exactly as we have specified and for alpha value we're going to change that to zero okay so now uh, we can move this arrow and you will see that this uh, alpha is uh, located at uh, 100 uh, keyframe uh, and we can move this uh, arrow on the left side or sorry on the right side and you can see that uh, this uh, image view will shrink its height and it will also have its uh, alpha value uh, set to zero until we reach uh, this keyframe of 100 so as you can see this is how uh, this animation will look like okay so uh, when we go from 0 to 100 you will see that our uh, height will decrease and this opacity will increase uh, slowly as we uh, proceed further to uh, this 100 keyframe okay so it looks uh, amazing and uh, also we can add uh, one more keyframe or key attribute and this time i'm going to use the same alpha but for the position i'm going to say 50 okay so we can add that and uh, now you can see that we have two keyframes so on the 50 and on 100 okay and uh, now we can open up this uh, activity main scene and uh, here you will see that those two key attributes are uh, already defined here uh, automatically by our motion layout editor and you will see that our first key attribute has the frame position of 100 and alpha to 0 and the second one has a frame position of 50 and also we're going to set this value to uh, 0 okay so now when we move to our activity main and when we try to uh, to move this arrow you will see that uh, our image view will disappear even faster so as you can see this uh, value uh, changed even faster so our image view disappeared uh, a lot faster than before so that's why we have added those two uh, key attributes on 50 and 100 keyframe okay so next uh, we're going to add uh, two more key attributes and this time we're going to apply uh, scale x and this time i'm going to set that to uh, let's say maybe 100 okay and let's add one more this time uh, scale y okay frame position 100 as well click add so now when we try to move this arrow let's see how uh, our animation will look like okay so let's move that okay so after that i'm going to select this uh, attribute uh, scale x and from here i'm going to set that to uh, zero and i'm going to select scale y and i'm going to set that value scale y to zero so our image view will shrink to zero uh, when we reach um, this keyframe position of 100 so let's check it out okay so this is the animation which we are going to get now okay so uh, not only that we have inserted this alpha animation uh, we have also used the scale x and scale y to decrease its uh, width and height uh, when we actually go through uh, this uh, transition and you can see in this preview how will that uh, work so it looks uh, very nice and uh, the last thing which we need to add here is uh, actual uh, swipe handler so you will see this uh, little icon here on the top that says uh, 
create click or swipe handler so click that and in this case we're going to create a swipe handler so from here uh, select the transition so start to end that's uh, default then uh, for the drag direction we can choose uh, which direction we want to use and in this case drag up uh, so the anchor side uh, we're going to set uh, bottom so we want to be able to swipe from the bottom of this uh, image view and for the anchor id we're going to select our actual uh, image view so this is the id of that image view and click add so now we have added this uh, swipe uh, gesture as well so let's run our application and let's see uh, how will that work okay so here you see our scroll view and uh, one text view inside and uh, we can scroll that uh, all the way to the bottom and to the top but also now we have implemented the motion layout so we can actually increase the overall width and height uh, or sorry the height of this uh, scroll view to match uh, the parent on the top so let's try so click and drag and as you can see it works uh, perfectly fine so this is just uh, one of the many animations which you can add to your project so you can just uh, swipe that on the top and you will see that this text view now will uh, have uh, even greater height so you can actually inspect this text uh, better and uh, down below as well so it works uh, very smooth so of course uh, this was uh, just a basic example of using a motion layout and uh, there are a lot of more uh, things to cover but uh, I'm not going to focus on uh, all of that inside this video. I might create uh, new videos about uh, each and every important uh, feature of this. Uh, and uh, if you want to see more videos about uh, this motion layout or some specific uh, functions of this motion layout, uh, please comment down below and tell me. And uh, now we're going to check this activity main scene and uh, see some of the main attributes or elements uh, inside this file. So uh, on the top we have a motion scene. So uh, motion scene is a XML resource file that contains uh, all of the motion descriptions for the corresponding layout. And uh, to keep layout information separate from motion descriptions, each motion layout references a separate motion scene. So this is the root uh, element of our uh, file here. Uh, then down below we can see uh, one element uh, named the transition. And here we are basically uh, defining our uh, constraint sets. So we have constraint set end and constraint set start. And here we are just basically referencing the IDs of those uh, constraint sets. And as you can see, those constraint sets uh, are located down below. So we have two of them, start and end. And also we have uh, the duration of our animation. We can change that uh, accordingly, of course. So inside this transition, we have a keyframe set. And inside this keyframe set, we're defining all our uh, keyframe uh, animations. So for now, we have added the uh, four of them. So uh, two alpha key attributes and uh, one scale X and one scale Y. And from here, of course, we can change their uh, frame position and of course we can target a different uh, views as well uh, then inside this transition animation as a second element we have a on swipe and here we have just defined a touch anchor id which is actually our image view and we have set a touch anchor side to bottom so we can actually swipe that from the bottom and uh, at the end you can see uh, two different constraint sets so we have first uh, with the id of start and the second one with the id of end so uh, this start basically uh, defines the actual default state of our uh, layout and this end is uh, defining the end state of our uh, motion layout so here as you already know we have only uh, animated our uh, first uh, and only uh, image view and that's why we have only one constraint here which is basically our background image view and the end uh, attribute of this uh, background image view is uh, 1dp in height and of course it's a layout with uh, which is a uh, mandatory as well so now you saw uh, one basic example of uh, how to use a motion layout and I know that uh, lots of you have asked me to create one tutorial about it so here it is so uh, if you want to see more uh, video tutorials about uh, motion layout and some of its uh, uh, great functionalities as well like uh, those uh, key attributes and key triggers key cycles key positions and so on then uh, leave comment down below and tell me and of course uh, in the future videos uh, I might create some uh, more complex uh, motion animations. And uh, for this video that will be all. So uh, thank you for watching. Please like this video if you find it helpful of course. And uh, see you next one.